young people can get cardiac arrest why is that happening all cardiac arrests are because of heart attacks but all heart attacks don't end up with a cardiac arrest the robot operates on its own without any human control absolutely not it's risk free compared to open heart surgery no no any hospital with robot can perform a surgery not true Hello and welcome to the News Minute. This is Real Talk. Joining me today is uh, Dr. Mohammad Rehan Saeed, who is a cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon who has 27 years of experience in this field. Uh, so thank you so much for talking to us. This show is powered by Apollo Hospitals. So my first question to you: We keep seeing uh, videos on social media where people just collapse and die of cardiac arrest. Young people, actually, why is that happening? Cardiac arrest is a very general term. So what they are having is an attack all cardiac arrests are because of heart attacks but all heart attacks don't end up with a cardiac arrest so you can have a mild attack and things you need not have an arrest but if you have a really bad one then it's called a cardiac arrest so when the heart really stops beating that's when it's called as a cardiac arrest so this is more common what we are seeing is in people who go to the gym and after one or two hours after returning from the gym is when this is happening it doesn't happen when they are in the gym it's after they finished with the workout then when it happens and this is because of something called as a plaque rupture so just uh, in a layman terms you have a road it's clean you have trees on either side the trees are a cholesterol they're all at the side the road's free to walk no issues with it now rain came storm came one of the trees fell and fell across the road what happened to the road it's blocked 100% this is exactly what happens so this is plaque rupture cholesterol stays at the side stuck to the side of your arteries if we exercise or let's say stress excessive exercise excessive stress or just that your genetics are bad lot of cholesterol and thing or your calcium score as they call it is very high then you are at a risk for these plaques to rupture if they rupture and fall with 100% occlusion then you will die or you will have a cardiac arrest but if they fall with just 30 or 40% block then god's on your side you can figure things out and get them fixed so what do we do to prevent i think you'll have to get back to healthy lifestyle but my advice would be to people who have a strong family history let's say i am 45 or let's take the age down i am 35 but i have a very strong family history i smoke i have been irregular about my lifestyle till now if i am going to embark on this journey personally i would suggest on this is my personal idea is that you should get a ct calcium score and figure out if you have significant high calcium score if your calcium score is very high then you want to start this whole process very slowly and uh, gently and not rush into something like you know a gym trainer putting you through 30 minutes of high intensity training no take it easy start easy slowly slowly and get there because you are at a risk of plaque rupture so i think that screening and then going forward would be a safe way to go forward okay that's the ideal way to deal with personally it. that's what i train also i'm an athlete i train but every time i'm going to train for something which is like uh, serious stuff like you know like uh, some championship or something i get my ct calcium score done and then only i get in because i i have a family history and i can always have a plaque rupture okay but this is uh, the age group is also very shocking right like a lot of people keep messaging tweeting saying he was just 22 his but indians we are prone to much younger age you know it used to be 60 first then it became 50 40 now it's come down to 30 i think that's because of our lifestyles and things covid the you know there's a lot of talk that covid contributed to it maybe maybe not we are not able to put a finger on it we are not able to prove it but yes we are seeing like really bad heart attacks now post covid than we did pre covid that's true coming to your uh, domain expertise of robotic surgeries uh, how aware are people about robotic surgeries maybe you can compare it with the rest of the world like in the indian situation i think we still in india the awareness of cardiac surgery and robotic cardiac surgery is not very great i have practiced for 19 years in bangalore and there are five centers or six centers in bangalore doing robotic cardiac surgery whereas we have only one center 
in chennai apollo chennai doing robotic cardiac surgery so you can see the difference of awareness just city to city we are right here from going from conventional surgery to robotics okay what is the difference in doing a cardiac robotic surgery and a traditional surgery like so in a traditional surgery you split the chest bone open that's a fracture that has to be put together and it will heal like any other fracture and that can be very debilitating to the patient meaning they will take months and months to recover from it so that's a problem the advantage of robotics or endoscopic surgeries is we don't cut the bone at all you go between the bone spaces and so there is no fracture to heal so it's like you falling off a bike you fell on some glass piece you got a deep cut you get stitched that's about all the pain you'll have because you don't do anything other than that you're not cutting any bone so the recovery is much faster it's minimal Yeah. Having said that, uh, what type of heart uh, conditions can be treated with this robotic surgery? I think now at Apollo, I would say for us, it's pretty much everything we are able to do. So we do the bypass surgery, we do mitral valves or valve surgery. You need not say mitral. We do valve surgery. We do mitral as well as the aortic valves. We are able to do both of them. If you have a hole in the heart, I can close it with the help of a robot. And so. slowly and steadily we have covering the whole spectrum of cardiac surgery in it there may be only say 10% of our work is uh, we need to do open the 90% of the work can be done using a robot and the benefits you are out the door quickly like uh, patients are walking the next day and they is that become that easy yeah they are walking the next day okay so they get up they walk to the toilet everything the next day and how safe is uh, you know Uh, a robotic heart surgery and what are the possible risks that are involved safety wise is the same as conventional surgery the risk is around 1 to 2% just like in conventional surgery i think in robotic surgery it is more important for the surgeon to understand what are his limitations the surgeon has to be very very honest about what he can do can he do one bypass only two only or three what is his capability that's all if he is well trained then you can do five four no problems so you can do quadruple bypass through it that is where the difference comes so if the surgeon is not confident and decides to push the limit then the operation becomes unsafe and that applies to both even as someone learning on a conventional also it is the same rules are the same outcomes are the same and the complications are the same it's all within 1 to 2% so there is no difference between the two except you as a patient you benefit from the fact that no bone is cut and the pain is less and because i cut less even bleeding is less so our patients uh, you know prepared for the, these kind of surgeries yeah they do come prepared I, i i have not had any problem my patients come to me asking for this procedure because over the years i built a reputation for it so i have people from across the country saying that we 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 want this and we are coming to you uh, for it but otherwise if you explain to a patient that these are the advantages they will definitely be prepared for it there is a cost difference to it it is more expensive because the technology is more expensive that is the only reason why they step back not because of the operation otherwise if you level the cost everyone will opt for this is it not um, you know uh, are there any measures that are put in place to make it affordable not that it is uh, i mean I don't think it is unaffordable. See, the cost of a robot is two million dollars, and all these instruments, the way that company has structured it, is they have finite uses, only ten uses or twenty uses, and they are all fed into the robot. You can't uh, hack it or you can't do anything. So that is where there is an additional cost to it. Okay, can you give us some examples about how patients have taken it up? Like, what is what was their initial reaction when? you propose something like this and after the surgery what has been their reaction yeah so the main thing that there is that for them it's new technology so the most common question i get asked is is it the same as conventional surgery or are we trying something experimental that's the first question it's a fair question if you don't know you will ask me that question so when i explain to them that no this has been around for 30 35 years i am only doing what is done and even i in when i started off one of the conditions for my patients was that i should be allowed to check angiograms to make sure that whatever bypass i am doing for you is done well so unless you gave me consent for that the first 1000 cases i did i insisted on the patients giving me that consent saying that it's a part of my learning curve by god's grace everything went well and the results were good and stable and all that now in chennai when I, after coming in what i see is because it's new to them this is the question is it the same as conventional can you do all the bypasses in that small cut are you able to see everything do everything once they are convinced that everything is doable 
then they'll again go back family will say everyone has done this why do you want to try this then i think it's a matter of trust whether they trust me or not but after the surgery they're very happy that they took it because they see the difference they're on their feet they're walking they're eating they it's not like surgery has happened so that's a big difference for them the doctors enough or uh, even you know in colleges or even in medical not in colleges medical colleges i don't think they're there i think this requires for the uh, doctors to finish the post graduation and then go do a fellowship which specializes in robotic uh, work and that has to be outside of the country because the volume is there only outside of the country i have a fellowship program now at apollo where i have a person training who i am teaching how to do and i run educational programs at least four times a year but those are very short one week program this is a full one year course it's a certification program and so surgeons can come and join and work with and work with me through the entire year and i teach them i let them operate i, I hands on teach them so that helps build newer programs so this is being done by you in association with apollo like it's is it's a I am a part of Apollo, so it is. So there is also a lot of misinformation about uh, robotic surgeries, and particularly use of robot in heart surgeries. So I'll ask you the misinformation. Maybe you can answer those questions. The robot operates on its own without any human control. Absolutely not. <laughs> you handle the robot. The robot does nothing. So what does it do? Like how do you handle it? Like it's like me putting my hand into your chest. and like say setting everything up inside so that hand that goes in is a robotic hand but i am the one controlling that robotic hand the robot doesn't know what to go on and do by itself the other misconception especially when it comes to bypass surgery is the robot stitches on the heart no it doesn't it, you we there are some centers doing total robotic but the results are not very good and not been uh, equal into when we stitch with our human hand so what we do for bypass surgery now is we use the robot to set everything up so that we can make a small incision exactly at the location which will give us complete access and then stitch with long instruments stitch regularly like we have done conventional surgery and that is why the results are equivalent another question that internet throws up is it's risk free compared to open heart surgery no no every surgery has some element of risk that 1 to 2 percent risk which we in which we cover bleeding infections and everything that remains for both they're equal i won't say there's less risk in robotic compared to open heart i think both have their place and both the risks are equal these are not frequently asked questions these are all frequently <laughs> the misinformation that is frequently available on internet right. so there's another one which says any hospital with robot can perform a surgery not true you're a good, you're a reader there is a book by a guy called malcolm gladwell called the tipping point if you read that book it will tell you that everything in life every single thing in life has a tipping point so i think it's the ninth symphony of tchaikovsky or beethoven one of them which is a very very complex symphony to play on the on the piano but a pianist for them to be able to memorize it they need to have played that 10000 times meaning for them to get up from their sleep and come and do that it requires 10000 times and that 10000 number kind of runs for pretty much everything in life for us and that is the tipping point so if you want to be a good robotic center and that's been proven for all all surgical specialties that the more volume you do the better you become and the safer the center becomes if you're doing just limited sporadic cases then your risk profile is very high so that is important so robotic cardiac surgery why apollo has been able to lead the way is we do on 200 open heart surgeries a month this is a center that has been doing this for so many years 50000 plus so for them to you know to move into this becomes an easier thing because the surrounding system is so geared to handling everything and to make sure that you go home fine so that is why high volume centers do much better even with newer technologies than polar centers it's always a problem and how many surgeries you have uh, conducted to robotic surgery if robotic i must have crossed say 500 plus but i do a lot of endoscopic and i have done close to say 5000 endoscopic so i have only taken the endoscope out so the difference between endoscope and robot is the dexterity of the hand in an endoscope it's like a rigid pipe you it will only move to a certain thing it doesn't move 360 a robotic hand moves 360 clockwise anti clockwise 
any plane. So that is the difference in dexterity. So for me, when the robot came, it was like, oh, this is a damn good toy. Because suddenly my hands are moving 360. You know, we're already doing endoscopic and we've been doing it successfully for many, many years. So to replace those endoscopic instruments with robotic instruments was the only difference that thing. So the learning curve was zero. So I think the way it has to go is the surgeon should be very good at conventional surgery. Then he has to become very good at uh, minimal access or endoscopic assisted surgery, then only go to robotic. If he jumps from conventional to robotic, if a problem happens in the robotic, he will have to open the chest up fully. That is come back all the way to conventional, which is a major complication to deal with. So that's why the learning curve, the doctor has to be good and understand how the, the transition has to happen. Has there been any cases where there uh, there were complications? Yeah, see, we uh, for us, patient safety is important. If we if you're doing a procedure and we find that you know the heart's not tolerating it, then we will either use the support of the heart lung machine and co accomplish the procedure fully. But suppose that's not possible, and you know it is still the, there is no tolerance, and we are not getting enough space or room to be doing this comfortably, then you can convert to a thing but that happens one in like thousand ten thousand like that it's because here it's about planning and execution so it means you planned wrong so your execution went wrong it's not nothing to do with the patient or anything to start with itself that patient would not have been a candidate that's all in this case uh, if a patient has to undergo cardiac robotic surgery what should be the age group no age group it can go i just did one last week on an 84 82 year old lady small tiny she is she's going home today she's fine and the recovery time is 6 days 6 days she's fine right she's going home. 82 year old getting up going home saying i want to go home in 5 days 6 days will it happen with conventional surgery if a doctor comes and tells me that instead of me it's a robot that is going to it's a not uh, then you're worried. I'll be, like, I'll be thinking twice, right? Correct. But it's not the robot doing it. It's the doctor who controls the robot. There is no surgery robotic that is done where the robot goes in and does its stuff and comes out. Even in the newer robot. People have a different notion about it. When yes. I think that's the reason why it has to be simplified. It has to be told. Correct. How it's done. Yeah. The surgeon controls the robot. Yeah. So the robot is like an extension of laparoscopic surgery. It's your hands. Your hands. Right, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us and explaining to our viewers in a very simple term about these surgeries, robotic surgery, and uh, the importance of doing knee cap surgeries. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much.